the cloud. Hello, everyone, and welcome to How the Fuck to Navigate, Read, and Get the Most Out of Your Cooper Book. So if you're here, if you're watching, um, I'm sure all of you guys, hopefully if you're testing, and if you don't, stop what you're doing right now and go online and purchase the Applied Behavior Analysis Cooper book, which we call the Cooper book, which is really the book written by John Cooper, Timothy Heron, and William Heward, okay? This is your book. Now, this book, is really thick. And as we've switched over now to the third edition, well, if you're testing before, you know which edition you're on when you're watching this video, okay? Now, if you're testing in 2022 and beyond, until further notice, we'll be using this third edition book. But this will be, if you're still testing on the second edition book when you watch this, the same rules apply, okay? But I want you guys to know that this book is extremely intimidating when you get it. And one of my most diva things I did, but I think it's okay because of, the, because of the fact that we are in the test prep business, I ordered a second copy of this book to have at my office <laughs> and one for home. And because this is my new office one, I don't have it tabbed at all. And so I was telling Casey this morning, I was like looking through this, it's the exact same book that I've read multiple times but something about it seems so scary because it's just like so much text. So I'm with you guys. The fact that I have a, a, a new book here, but I also will show you guys my used book. So I hope if you guys are here right now, because we're also going to do an exercise that I hope you guys have your Cooper book with you. How many of you guys have it with you? Anyone? And if not, if you watch it as a video later, you could take it out. Good. Good. Everyone's typing in the chat that they do. Okay. So here's the thing, whether you're a retaker or not, and let me tell you one of the most common things, and Casey is manning the email all the time, and we both man the Instagram. So we get a lot of people reaching out to us saying like, okay, so this is a, a common, whether it's a retake situation, like, I don't know what to do. And then we ask one basic question, right? We're like, okay. And I need all honesty here. Did you read your Cooper book? And oftentimes the answer is no, right? But I took your classes, I did this. The Cooper book is what the test is on. And there's also a way to read it, is also why we are here today to tell you how to actually read the book to get the most out of it. And I don't know, there was some rumor going around the field that you do not actually have to read the book to pass the test. And that is the biggest load of bullshit I've ever heard. This is literally what the test is on. This is the final say on anything you see on the internet, any uh, opinion on a certain topic, it's, it's in here because it's written off this book. So please do not believe any bullshit you see because this book is really important. And yes, I know it's scary, but we're gonna tell you what to do. We're gonna tell you how to make your Cooper book user-friendly. All right, so here's a copy of my other Cooper book that is at my house. And as you can see, it has tabs. So this book right now that I'm holding is looking scary to me because it's just a fuck ton of text. Now, as you can see in the picture over here, I'm telling everyone to label each chapter in your book and what the chapter is about. So if I could zoom in really close, like you could see it says chapter four, measuring behavior, right? Then it says chapter 11, reinforcement. This way, when you are looking something up, it makes it so much easier for you and less response effort to actually take your book out and turn to a page. Like if I took this book that's right in front of me right now, it's like, oh my God, I have to like, first of all, go find the index or the glossary and then look for it. And there's just so much. This already is like, you are taking one big goal of reading a big book and now you've already put it into manageable pieces. Now, when you read it, you're actually not gonna assign yourself a chapter at a time. You're gonna do much less than that. But this is a perfect start. 
And hopefully by the time anyone's watching this video, our tabs are in. We've created all these tabs for you with the chapter name and the, um, the chapter and exactly how you should place them. So I'm hoping that this is out by the time you watch this. You know, supply, supply chain is delayed ever since COVID. So here we go. All right, this is also really important. Learn about the Cooper Companion website. It's your friend, okay? So the Cooper Companion website is the book, Pearson, the makers of the book, have created this website, which has um, chapters. You can see, you could select a chapter. You could take quizzes on it. There's guided notes on each chapter. But what I'm really wanting you guys to do is take the quizzes. Any free questions from a credited source, okay, like the book makers themselves, the publishers themselves, are great opportunity for you to practice going over what you have read, okay? So maybe you read chapter 11 and then you're like, okay, I'm gonna answer the questions on that chapter. It's all free on the website. So I really recommend doing that. I think there's about 10 questions per chapter. Some have more, but yeah, mainly around 10 average. Yeah, so around 10. And what I, I recommend link in the link chat, um, anyone watching the video, I know I'm gonna get emails, just Google Cooper Quizzes Pren Hall and you'll find oh. it. And also I'll zoom in a little bit. There is the website. That's just chapter two, for example, that I clicked on, but there you go. So that was an antecedent to avoid emails. Um, <laughs> you could go there, answer questions. And one thing I really recommend about these quizzes is of course it's great to do it after you read a chapter, but what I would like to do when I was studying, I would, let's say I had just read, um, see, I don't have tabs on the side of this book, so it's annoying for me, but let's say I had just read chapter, 13, oh no, sorry, chapter 31, and it's about ethics, right? I might go back, I might, I'll definitely take the ethics quiz, but I might just to test something that I studied a long time before, I might go take the chapter one quiz, right? Because as we get further away from what we studied in the beginning, sometimes we forget it. So a great thing to do is take a quiz and maybe on something that you weren't reading that day, just to ensure that you're maintaining what you've already studied. All right, number three, and I do not say this lightly, mark the F out of your book, okay? A sterile, am I saying that right? Sterile? Sterile. sterile. <laughs> <laughs> this is sterile. Uh, you know, my mom, my mom from South Africa, that this is sterile, I'm telling you, a sterile. That's how you're like, saying. Sterile. I, I say a lot of things like my mom. Um, this is sterile looking, okay? There's really nothing to look at on this book. And so even today, we're about to do an exercise. I was like, Casey, I don't know which area I wanna do because there's just like so much writing. When you have writing in your book, it differentiates different parts. It also is making it more, you know, um, salient to you on different things you study, different colors, put stickers, put post-its, whatever it is, okay? A, and a lot of people are like, but I want to sell this book back. It's a, it's a hundred twenty dollars, a hundred thirty dollars, whatever you bought it. Okay, just toss that idea out the window. You're keeping this book. If you're going for your BCBA or BCABA, you're going to need this book. You will reference it looking at different procedures, you know, different things. You'll be supervising individuals who are also studying for their boards. And this is something that you need to keep. So you might as well make it yours, okay? Think back to sixth grade when you used, I don't know, at least I went to school early, like they let you in a week before and you could go decorate your locker. I mean, I had like a mini chandelier in there. I have photos of every one of my fake friends who would like not my friend the next week, trauma. Um, but make sure you are decorating this book and noting it up everywhere, all over, that it's something that you actually want to look back and reference. 
So we're actually gonna do an exercise and this exercise requires you to open, if you have the third edition Cooper book, to page 287. And by the way, I just wanna cite that this again is the Cooper book that we are sharing here. Um, and I know all you guys have it, but we're gonna play a game. Okay, so, oh my God, you could make reading this aversive book a game. Sure, you can make anything a game. Here we go. So let's say I'm, 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 my goal today is that I decided I'm gonna read two pages of the negative reinforcement chapter. Chapter 12, again, page 287. You're gonna take your highlighters out, right? Hopefully you guys have some highlighters that make you excited. You need different colors, okay? I'm not saying like just one like dried out highlighter. You need like, you need colors, okay? You need options, whatever it is, you're gonna take it out. But right now I am going to be using my Apple Pencil as a highlighter so that I could share with you. But this is the game, okay? The game is called three, okay? It goes like this. You are given a highlighter and your highlighter only has limited ink. Again, I said, don't get a dry out highlighter, but for this game, we're gonna pretend like your highlighter is running out of ink, okay? You really have to ration it, okay? Meaning you are only allowed to highlight three sentences per paragraph. If you're like myself, you wanna highlight everything when you read it, because you're like, I bet that's important, that's important. But it's actually a skill to be able to take the important parts out of some of your reading. So let's go ahead and I'm actually going to start from right here. See where I've noted the definition of negative reinforcement. And I'm gonna go through here and I want you guys to practice going through and see what three, and I, to be honest, I have not, I mean, I've read this before, but not right before class right now. And again, this is a blank page of a book. And I'm blank right. too, so I'm doing it with you guys. Yeah. So everyone we all go, it. <laughs> go through right now. And you are going to highlight what you think are the three most important sentences of this paragraph. I'm going to also. Sometimes I even do just like words. Me too. All right. Does yours look similar to mine? I definitely highlighted the definition at the beginning, right? Negative reinforcement, contingency is one in which the occurrence of a response produces a termination, reduction, postponement, or avoidance of the stimulus, which leads to an increase in the future occurrence of a response. Okay, even if you don't understand that upon first reading it, that's fine, but you've at least highlighted it. And then you know what the definition is, and now you're going to read your book for further examples. Right now, this one was a little hard to use highlight sentences because it was almost like the next thing was really just one whole statement, right? Mm -hmm. But it was saying there's a four term contingency. So I might actually like take out a pen that I like, orange, my favorite color. So I might write four term contingency underneath. Like, hold on, that's a lot of writing. Let me, let me write down what it said, okay? So it definitely said A, there's an EO. And it said an EO where escape or avoidance is valuable. Okay, 
That's one in my four-term contingency, okay? Now I'm gonna go to two. What did it say is two? Anyone? SD, Melanie got it right, yep. Good, it said there's an SD, that discriminative stimulus, right? Perfect, anything else you wanna write about it? We know an SD from other chapters. Yeah, right? Antecedent, it's the A of the three-term contingency, I would write that. But these two are the antecedent, you mean? Yeah, the one and the two. Mm -hmm. All right, now we have three. What is the, or C over here, right? I mean, that's gonna get confusing, but they wrote it as A, B, C, D, but this is not the actual consequence. So let's just say three. We said there's an SD, now there's the actual response or? Behavior. Uh-huh. Now four, right? It says the reinforcer is termination of the event that served as, so we're gonna say, that's where our negative reinforcement happens, right? Mm -hmm. At the end there, that's when we're like, okay, something, it's reinforcement that occurred because something was taken away, right? Yep. So you are gonna have to put little things like this. And then as you read more, you might be like, oh, they were saying an example of like, you're wearing an itchy sweater, right? That's that EO, like you're uncomfortable. Escaping that sweater, getting it off is really valuable. There's an SD. You see someone who could help you unzip it in the back, right? You might ask them, hey, can you take this off, right? That was the SD. Now the behavior, you're like, hey, can you take this off? The consequence is, oh, I'm not itchy anymore, right? Negative reinforcement. You got rid of that uncomfortable situation you were in. So you are going to do this, try, simplify these things. And let's go to, we're gonna do one more paragraph. That one I know had a, um, that's Ellie Ron's thumb, if anyone's wondering. Ellie Ron, art. Okay, so <laughs> by the way, interesting fact, I have a tremor bit and like I can never take things. It's like very minor, but I shake when I try to get like text pictures. So, okay, now we're gonna try this next paragraph. And now we're talking about positive versus negative reinforcement. I'm probably gonna choose a new color because more color, the better for me. Mm, I like this one. Mm Ah, addition removal. All right, you're doing that first paragraph? I did the whole first left side. Oh, you did? Okay. If you're just joining, we're on page 288 of Cooper. We're just trying to practice limiting the amount of highlighting that we do. Because I'm a highlighter where I would just highlight everything. And that doesn't help me when I go to read it because I'm just rereading a bunch of things that are now highlighted. <laughs> All right. So funny, we did the exact same ones. We did? Yeah, and I wasn't even looking at yours. Okay, so. I actually am starting with these. 
before I get into the detailed thing. First, I'm, I'm doing like, these are just the main points, okay? It does get more specific talking about like in like all on or all off, right? But then it talks about like getting into details. But to first understand the concept, you start with this, okay? So let's say I take this color and I'm like, okay, positive and negative reinforcement have similar effects on behavior that they both increase responding, okay? So in my head right there, I'm like, okay, so they both increase responding. Okay, that's what makes it reinforcement, right? And I'm sure before this, you read a chapter on reinforcement, right? Okay, then I go through. They differ with respect to the type of stimulus change that follows behavior, right? And then they have, then I would look at the image that it was showing me, right? So here they have, this one is positive reinforcement. This one is negative reinforcement. And then they put all this writing over here into an image, right? So they show the first one of positive reinforcement, child missed lunch at school, right? Now they see the older sibling at home when they get home, they ask the sibling to make a sandwich, right? And the sibling makes a sandwich, right? Something was added, the sandwich to the situation. And now in the future, if they're hungry, they probably lost their sibling. Then they give an example of negative reinforcement, right? Rain starts to fall and lands on your clothes, okay? I would probably write to myself, hashtag aversive, no one likes getting wet in the rain, right? SD. There's a new stand nearby, something signaling like, hey, I could get away from this, right? Behavior, you buy a newspaper and use it as a cover. And now uh, you have hashtag relief. So, and then I'm gonna go back to my other sentences. And by the way, that's all that was written right here, right? So they put in an image for me, great. But then the next sentence I highlighted that apparently Casey did too, Behavior maintained by positive reinforcement produces a stimulus that was absent prior to responding, right? So in this example, there's now a sandwich there, right? That stimulus is now present, which wasn't there before. And it says, whereas behavior maintained by negative reinforcement terminates or removes a stimulus that was present prior to responding. So this time it's like, actually, now it's removed, right? Like there was something you didn't like there and it was removed and whatever you did to remove it, you're going to do again. That's what makes it reinforcement. The fact that you'll do it again. All right. So that's just what I'm going to go through now, just because we're limited on time for this class. I know it's people's lunch time, so I definitely want to move on. But that's an example of taking something where you want to highlight everything and taking out the main points. Now, what you're going to read further, it's not that any of the rest of the stuff isn't important, but now you're reading for under for understanding in a more in more depth. But first, take out the main points. Beautiful. Great. All right. Now you need to know how to locate your table of contents. Okay, that is in the front of your book. Now, when you are going through making your tabs for your book, or if ours are available by then. The great thing is, is that you will be able to just turn to those pages, but your table of contents also helps you in that it, like, so even if a chapter is called, let's say, generalization and maintenance of behavior change, sometimes you wanna know more specific what's gonna be underneath that, right? Like if you're looking for a, um, something on, you know, strategies for promoting generalized behavior tactics. You're like, okay, it's underneath there. Sometimes you need that to look for something. And again, I also love to do that in my index. I feel like I can find a lot. Speaking of which, index, that shit is golden. If you like scavenger hunts when you were a kid, it's your time to relive your childhood. You will find, and what I like about the index is that terms are written down like the most broken down they could be, right? So like, it's instead of being like, oh, experimental designs, it will be like, um, like you could even look up a, like variations of specific experimental designs by their name, right? It might be whatever it is, you could look up here. 
but use your index. Take notes on what you read. So those kind of notes I was just writing in the book underneath, I would draw out that four-term contingency on paper, for example. And then I would take some bullet notes on the things underneath it that were that we didn't continue reading, right? And then I would make an example of my own life that relates to that, right? I might think like, okay, they're writing about having someone make me a sandwich, but I'm really asking someone to get me a seltzer from the fridge, right? If you're able to generalize this information from your Cooper book, you're golden. This is really important. Set your goals that are actually manageable, okay? Reading an entire chapter, that might seem like, oh, that's man. It could be a lot. Some chapters are really long and really deep that you might get more out of it by just reading two pages instead of reading all of it and then getting none, right? So make sure if you are going to set expectations for yourself, you're going to make them that are actually manageable and doable. And one last thing I see that someone said they like to relate it back to their clients, that's great. Relate it back to your clients, but I do wanna let you know also that you are not being tested solely on, you know, as it relates to your clinical work. The best understanding you could have is if you could apply it to anything, whether it's, you know, a dolphin's behavior, a random behavior you've never heard of anything, and how it relates to your real life will mean that you could generalize it to any topic on the test, right? Because if you understand these concepts, it means that you could apply it to anything. Like you understand negative reinforcement as it applies to an individual with autism or to yourself or your ex-boyfriend, whatever it is. All right. But yes, it's great if you could connect it to all aspects of your life. All right. We have to say this because this is the place where you will be bringing all your Cooper to real life. So obviously you could read this Cooper book on your own, right? I mean, when I had to study, there was no collective. So I did just that. But if you are having a difficult time reading your book and breaking down what to read when, or you're not someone who is able to learn from the book, I, I really do recommend taking our collective because we take everything that we cover every single thing you need to know and tell you what to read after we've taught it to you. So you're not reading your book to learn it for the first time. You're reading your book as further examples. And the way we break down definitions are going to be in layman's terms that when you read it here, they sound a lot scarier and they're a lot more to remember. So if you're someone and can have that accountability piece telling you what to read when, breaking it down for you and explaining it, this is great for anyone looking for that. And Caitlin's in here right now. She's in the Winter Collective. She said, it's so good. We have so much fun. Great. Yes, the Collective makes the Cooper book way more relatable. Thank you. Oh my gosh. All this positive reinforcement relating it to my real life. There you go. Great, I'm so happy you guys like it. Just so you know, it will not feel so painful. It will be like, oh wait, I actually get this stuff. And you'll get a community that you're with and like, you'll feel like you're not alone. <laughs> That's for sure. Cause yeah. stuff is lonely. Yeah, 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 I'm excited. All right, now, the same as we do with our own clients, track your data, okay? If you need to make yourself a, picture where you could color in a circle every time that you read five pages or that you've studied for five minutes, do it. We have some free resources for you in the Facebook group. If you join the Study Notes ABA um, main group, the official group on Facebook, we have resources in there. Like this one is for whole interval data sheets. So if you set it as like a five minute interval, if you were studying for that entire time, amazing. And, you and there's like seven that. pages of this. Uh, I just posted it in the chat. Um, anyone that's watching can find it right in the um, file section under Facebook. And it's got um, all different types of data sheets for your studying. And what's it called? Just in case they want to look it up. 
Uh, it's called self-management, um, self-monitoring data sheets. Okay, self-monitoring data sheets. Not you work, or I'll figure out how to, the link, if you just go to the Facebook, that should work. I don't know why the link's not working. Because that looks like it's coming from your computer directly. Yeah, it is. It's working for me on mine. All right, this is really important. It's not specifically about the Cooper book, but in general, and we say it over and over and over. My chair is so loud. And it's pick and stick. Okay, whatever you are using to study, stick with it. There are, there's going to be so many silver balls, that's what we call it, silver bar, uh, silver, silver ball syndrome, right? Where like something passed and you're like, oh, I should study like this, I should study like this. This girl's it's doing shiny this. Balls. It's called shiny ball syndrome, like a shiny ball like rolls around and then you're like, oh, like right when you're doing something else. That's literally me. So, I remember that I studied the same topic, probably like the, at least the first chat, like the seven dimensions when I was studying like 30 times. Cause that's when I was like, actually, I'm going to study it like this. Actually, I'm going to write in this kind of notebook. Actually, I'm going to do this. It is so hard to commit and find that one way to do it, but I'm letting you know, it's going to feel uncomfortable at first, no matter which way you choose, even if you choose the most fun way, whatever it is but stick with it until you get into the same way when you're on a jog, you got to start, it's uncomfortable no matter what in the beginning and then you get a runner's high, right? Stick with it because you are going to be wasting so much time just going method to method. Yes. And then you're going to try to be like, oh, let me print out this person's flashcards they created. That worked for them, okay? You don't need that. I used to do it too. Print off every person's Quizlet they ever made. I have so many, like, I look at all my- I did, I didn't, Yeah, but I, I never studied. I never it. used it. I like bought like this boot camp flashcard thing. I never used it. I, so much stuff. I it's was just like- It's important to make your own. And like, if you're deciding to take notes and like, let's say you do decide to use our method. Don't feel like you need to go do 30 other methods too, because there's just not enough time. There's a lot to learn, right? So like, if you're not into flashcards, don't do flashcards, whatever. Don't feel that because someone else who passed the test used flashcards, that's what worked for them. And by the way, never compare your progress to someone's Instagram progress. Okay, they're only posting their pretty tabbed book. Not, you don't know what's happening behind that. Please, please, please be careful of where you get your resources from. Um, as there are, again, that's why I said, take advantage of the Cooper um, Companion website. Um, I see a lot of free stuff going around and it could literally ruin everything that you've read or studied in your book, because if they have the wrong information on a mock, you are taking that as an answer and generalizing it. So just know the final word comes from your Cooper book, I also not, want to us, point not them, not this, the Cooper book is the final word. I also want to point out while we're in here, and this will be on YouTube too, um, we've had a ton of spam in our Facebook group. I've had to block and remove so many people. I don't know if they're real or not, but if you see someone being like, hey, I passed my test, DM me for info. Like, do not do that. They're, they're literally saying that they have like exam people that are giving them answers. They're not, I don't think they're real people, but please, 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 if you see anyone that says like, I'm trying to get rid of everything that I see, but if you do see that, like DM me for more info, don't do it, FYI. <laughs> Weird. I know it's been nuts. I just got another one. We want to make sure because we looked at the actual book that we cite it. Okay. That's the Cooper book. If you don't have it, go get it. And you guys know where to find us. You could find us on our website, studynotesaba.com. You could contact us through there on Instagram at studynotesaba or on Facebook at studynotesaba. And hopefully this helps and we are um i'm gonna stop the recording now so we can answer some questions from anyone but i hope this helped and we'll see you at the rest of our lunch and learns every monday and wednesday in the month of november come hang and learn